good evening thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about how can indian web pros navigate the new normal and find global opportunities what a crazy year we all had and um it's just, i can't believe that 2020 is almost getting over and we had to learn quite a bit we had tough times both in our life and our uh, in our business but even though things were tough we believe there are uh, opportunities which got opened up for uh, indian web pros which which could potentially uh, reach out to the global markets over the next 20 minutes i'll talk about what are some of the uh, key trends which is driving digitization of indian smbs and the the experience indian uh, web pros have with the indian smbs is created global opportunities for the indian uh, web pros and then what are some of the uh, key um, playbooks which the web pros have to deploy to be successful in the global market so those are things i will i'll uh, focus on uh, most of you would not have heard about uh, zinav so i will start with uh, explaining a little bit about zinav so we are a management consulting firm we have been around for the last uh, 18 years we help large global companies establish their engineering and innovation presence across the globe as well as help them expand in global markets uh, for both the products and services we also work with uh, technology services companies in helping them with the global growth strategy mna as well as help them uh, with market visibility for their solutions and offerings and we have about 400 consultants and every year we actively engage with over 200 customers getting into some of the trends um last year was hugely disruptive for the smb market across the globe more so in india and we can see that in the number of smbs who are uh, registered to uh, gst many of them uh, turned uh, were not able to be compliant this year in fact we see the number of gst compliant smbs to co go down to about 12 million in this year however there are a lot of positive trends around digitization right one is uh, the total upi transactions have grown from 12 billion to 16 billion you have a uh, very easy to use highly secure um payment system which is connected to your phone number and your bank account uh, at that made um made the smbs use upi to transact in various kind of uh, mo mobile platforms um and the smb uh, using aggregated platform for discovery also significantly increased uh, from 12 million to what 18 million you're using aggregators such as amazon flipkart and others smbs also um have used the smartphone uh, effectively as a as a window to the internet and from just you a million smbs using channels like whatsapp we have seen about 15 million pretty much every kerala store what you and i buy your products or are able to use whatsapp um not only just to showcase the product catalog and engage with us but also transact on the platform uh, to be able to come uh, and then uh, enable us in the last mile delivery right so it's, it's been a very um uh, interesting uh, time for the smbs to really digitize and use some of these platforms and all of this would not have happened without uh, geo being such a foundational uh, enabler for organizations uh, so that they can they, it increased uh the overall uh, availability of mobile internet also reduce overall cost made it available for millions of smbs to um to engage uh, customers as well as transact and deliver the products and services completely online so overall even though it was a tough time for the smbs the digitization has accelerated and if you step back and then see how some of these companies have gone through the overall digitization journey i can go back and look at stage 1 and we have kind of defined this as just five stages the initial stage is all about discovery right so we had company like just style which came in they had india mart who had um thousands literally thousands of foot soldiers who went in signed up um as these smbs with the basic information of the about the smbs on their uh, listing sites and smb didn't have to have a lot of digital capability to be part of these um uh, these platforms however as the number of listings increase um the value from the listings reduced and the in smb is able to get some value by doing paid listing um but the value started diminishing 
Now, at that time, you start to see Amazon, Flipkart, and other uh, e-commerce platform which are coming in, aggregator platform which are coming in. The SMB started using this platform not just for the discovery, but also enable the transaction and sell the products uh, on these platforms. And then you saw the wave of social media, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, and all of that uh, came in. So SMB started creating their presence on Facebook. Then they started using uh, WhatsApp, a platform like Misho, uh, was able to bring the both the buyers and sellers together um, and use WhatsApp to enable the overall um, a transaction. And Misho is um, a rumored to be uh, raising uh, funds, which is going to value them over $1.5 billion. So it's an amazing story in a very short period uh, using the macro trend which is happening in the market. There are interesting startups which are, which are getting built. And the fourth stage is um, really when companies are looking at, um, hey, I'm, I'm getting good traction on, on um, aggregated platforms. So now, now I really need to build my own online presence, own product catalog, own transaction uh, capability. So companies started building their own e-commerce storefronts. And then um, getting to the next level is really um, wanting to add additional experience to customers and started building mobile um, applications to provide experience to the customers. Um, so it's been a you know, stage process for the SMBs to accelerate. And what we have seen is the last nine months, um, it's kind of uh, moving SMBs through the stages quite rapidly. And for, to understand this, we, let's look at some of the persona of uh, SMBs. We look at the person of SMBs into four uh, clear buckets. Right? One is uh, low mature, low business ambition. They are really, you know, they are they are um, almost doing it just to make a living, not in terms of growing the business. So that's a majority of the SMBs. Second is uh, companies which are um, low digital maturity but wanting to grow their business. And third are companies which have high digital um, uh, maturity and really trying to grow the business. Fourth are uh, we would call them global SMBs, where um, uh, they are high digital majority as well as high global ambitions. Think of this as a flywheel, right? And what has happened is the, the pandemic has accelerated this flywheel over the last nine months, where companies which are low digital mature, low business ambition, just using WhatsApp um, uh, from a listing perspective, are now getting into being part of aggregator uh, platform so they can, they can enable transactions. The, the company which are driving um, the, were part of the uh, aggregated platforms are really figuring, oh, well, I I'm part of the aggregated platform getting benefits. Why can I set up my own e-commerce for a friend, um, a store friend, as well as uh, drive uh, transaction and able to even deliver, integrate logistics and delivery and able to deliver to customers. And then, and then the company which are already in that stage are looking at how do I really want to differentiate because now suddenly the product uh, um, in the during the pandemic time, what they are selling, it's it's relevant uh, in across India, even in, in global markets. So I really want to provide a better customer experience. So they are upgrading their e-commerce for um, you know store friends as well as creating a mobile experience. So you see this flywheel movement movement and happening much faster uh, because of COVID. And this has been enabled by hundred thousand web pro web professionals across India. And you look at web professionals, uh, we categorize them into four types of web professionals. One are uh, website developers and hosters. So these are um, the company which build websites for small business and maybe sell attached services like uh, email and hosting along with that. Second is uh, digital agencies who provide end-to-end -end marketing, um, uh, marketing support uh, to SMBs. They're also expected to build websites and more so in terms of improving the UI UX experience of the websites what they have. And the third is really sub distributors. These are more um, distributors who would um, you know, resell PCs and other services to a small business. They have strong relationship with a small business owner, but might not have technical capability. They outsource some of the web development work to uh, freelancers in that local location whom they have relationship, but not have people within their uh, organization. And fourth are more IT and ITES organizations. So these are you know, smaller companies which build custom application, help organizations move to cloud, cloud migration, and, and so on. So these four contribute about 100,000 web pros have really been helping the digitization journey of the uh, Indian small business. The interesting trend though, what we discovered is about 15 
uh, 10 to 15 percent of these web pros are really also tapping into the huge global market of SMBs and taking some of the services, what they offer in the India market to the global customers. So we really wanted to dig deeper in this and say, hey, what is really happening? What is this market opportunity which is opened up for web pros? And we did a whole bunch of surveys, talked to web pros. And here are some examples of a very interesting company which are building true global businesses sitting from India. You know, still micro businesses, but global businesses. I'll give a couple of examples. Like take a company like Boring Commerce based out of Hyderabad. They have presence in London, New York, Dubai, Singapore, just 50 employees. Um, they've been, in fact, able to um, help about 100 plus um, SMBs manage their e-commerce storefronts, also help them with inventory management, integration with logistics and support. And what, what they told us is um, the, there is the demand is significantly increased, three to four, uh, five times increase in demand for organization wanting to build complete e-commerce for uh, you know, storefronts, uh, their global customers wanting to uh, grow that. So, so they're seeing interesting traction. Then there's another company I want to talk about is Curious Technology, started by a, a freelancer about eight years ago. On seven years ago, they started working with global uh, SMBs, help them with website development, maybe manage some content, manage, uh, help them with um, some of the digital agency, digital marketing, uh, marketing work. The company have been steadily able to grow and today have revenue uh, anywhere between uh, 50 lakhs to one crore, right? I'm think of a company which is uh, started by a freelancer in Udaipur, able to really a tier two city in India, able to build and service global customers. So when based on this, in the, based on uh, talking to a lot of these web pros, we really want to understand what are these um, macro trends which is enabling the Indian web pros to work with global customers and we came up with you know five um, uh, key trends which is helping them drive one is covid has really created a level playing field so if you are a customer let's say you are a customer in i hope um, um, or uh, in new york city you are not going out to meet your vendors so for if it doesn't matter your vendor your uh, web pro is based in india a web pro is based in israel a web pro is based in new york because all of this is remote so that has created a level playing field for uh, Indian web pros. Second is, um, we talked about the digital savvy, um, high growth, high ambitious uh, small business. That's about 2 million. A lot of the Indian web pros actually work with those 2 million SMBs in India. And these SMBs behave like a global uh, SMB. So experience Indian web pros have with these 2 million SMBs is helping them build the right set of solutions and offering for the global SMBs. And the third part is um, the rapidly growing um, startup ecosystem in India. We have over 9,000 plus startups. And these startups, if you look at the startup ecosystem in India, part of the ecosystem in India is building products for the India market. But a large part of the growing Indian startup ecosystem is really building product for the global market. So company, if you look at company like Freshworks, Chargebee, they've mastered the way in which you can drive go to market using thought leadership, SEO, SEM, freemium based business model to tap into global customers. So that is really a key learning which the web pros are able to observe and use in the way they sell and acquire customers. And fourth is in terms of um, the overall ecosystem, right? So you, a lot of the Indian, uh, Indian web pros work with Endurance, they work with Google, they work with Cisco, they work with Microsoft. These are global platform companies and the fact that they, they know, they understand these platforms, they're working on these platforms and these platforms become channel for them to expose their solutions and their services to global customers who are leveraging these platforms and finally, um, the, the IT and uh, ITES industry in India has created several uh, unicorns already over the last 20 years. And they have created a strong brand and for the Indian IT services capability in the global market. And they also really cracked how to sell and deliver a uh, great customer experience uh, from India. So a lot of the web pros are able to understand that they hire uh, engineers from these IT services company. They're able to understand how to service these global customers. So that convergence of these five trends 
is enabling the Indian web pros to really focus on global markets. And we really analyzed the different opportunities these companies have. So we are able to come up with five distinct opportunities. A combination of that will be uh, over $2 billion of addressable opportunity for Indian web pros. And these are, and I'll go into a little bit of detail as we go through this, but um, uh, to, to name them, it's cloud enabled operations. Second is integrated e-commerce. Third is digital email marketing. Fourth is process automation. And fifth is securing the SMB operation. So let's spend um, some time on each of these uh, areas. The first one is cloud enabled operation. The, the pandemic really um, proved to the SMBs that um, cloud is, will really help them in improving the overall business continuity as well as um, helping them in enabling collaboration remotely with their employees, partners, as well as the customers. And um, there has been a significant amount of innovation on the cloud platforms over the last nine months. You have deep discounts provided by the large, uh, large platform vendors, as well as ease of maintenance as definitely created significant need among the global SMBs around enabling on cloud. And if you look at some of the use cases they're looking for, they're really looking for how do I move my existing on-prem applications onto the cloud that will include data migration, the cloud native application development and integration. They're also looking at how do I move some of my Excel based systems into the SaaS application, which will include you know, a lot of migration, as well as some of the newer applications, be it deploying Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and other collaboration uh, in infrastructure that allows them to, um, to interact with their internal teams as well as their external partners, and not just interact, these tools are, can also be used as a development platform for their internal employees. And the supply, there has been a significant amount of supply side investments. You saw Salesforce acquiring Slack at $27 billion. You have Microsoft create back to business suite to enable um, SMBs to you know, continue the business effectively. Uh, AWS started certifying individual ISV solutions rather than the overall uh, ISV brand itself. Then we can see um, the web pros talk about a significant amount of traction from customers in helping them um, migrate their existing applications as well as build cloud native um, and mobile native applications. So this is a massive opportunity about 300 to $400 million. The second key opportunity is integrated e-commerce. So now all of the companies are used to Amazon and, and, and Facebook and others, and companies are soon realize that, hey, I'm able to get traction, but also have challenges. They don't have access to customers, and there is a significant amount of revenue share with these platforms. Already their, plat their products are um, you know, at raised in margin and they need to pay these platforms even more money to manage that. And, and more and more, uh, more, more than that, the SMBs um, thrive in having direct customer interaction and, 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 and get great, great satisfaction in solving the customer problem and providing the customer experience. And, and that's one of the reasons, the ones which are mature on uh, on the aggregated platforms are realizing that it's important for them to have their own e-commerce storefront. And that's a reason you see companies starting to create that. The second part they've also realized is um, they don't have to restrict to the set of customers which are closer to them in a, in a physical context. Now they can sell customers who have the need for the product they are selling or a service they're selling. Um, this, the customer could be global. So how do I now use uh, integrated e-commerce capability to be able to sell discover and sell, transact with customers across the globe. Across the globe. So here, the, the key use cases are, how do I build um, easy to use uh, e-commerce site? How do I easy manage the e-commerce site in a, in a, in a easy or a low cost, a low cost, a low cost manner? And how do I enable the e-commerce site to have frictionless capability to transact the customers across the world, uh, whichever location they are in, they should be able to use whichever uh, model they're comfortable in terms of um, uh, engaging and transacting with the company, and also integrating logistics, a last mile connectivity at each of this location um, uh, to make it seamless for delivering the products to the customer, wherever the customers are. And you're starting to see significant investment on the supply side. Uh, Endurance bought a company, Ecom Dash, for $10 million. The company helps 
with integrated inventory management um, as well as omni-channel market uh, market presence for um, uh, for the SMBs. Also, you have see um, FB shops um, is, is starting to focus on getting about 90 million SMBs online. And when we talk to web pros, there's been interesting stories. We have uh, Boarding Commerce has built 100 plus e-commerce storefronts by SMB in the last two years, and this is just accelerating. And more and more SMBs are coming to them, and not just for e-commerce storefront. They want them to integrate with a various transaction engine. They want to integrate with the, the last mile logistics capability as well. So it's a huge opportunity. We expect this to be a, a $500 million to a $1 billion opportunity for, um, for Indian SMBs. The third is really creating digital presence and marketing. The companies are part of aggregated side and, and they really want to do two things, right? One, they want to be able to articulate their product catalog very clearly and what is that the products and services and update it very clearly. And they want to have that um, um, present on different channels, be it uh, social media, be it their own website, be it email, uh, be it other digital channels where they're able to take what they have, uh, the content they have, they have in terms of product catalog and make it visible to customers across various channels. So here they're looking for um, companies which can manage end-to-end, -end, uh, provide them end-to-end -end marketing and, and manage all of that for them so that the, they can pay the, the, the web pro a certain amount of money and the web pro manages all the different channels uh, for, the, for the company. So this again, um, there are significant amount of investments. Google is helping SMBs globally with a $350 million spend. And this is something the SMBs could use now or also could use in the future. Now uh, you have FB's guide initiator, which is helping digitize over 6 million uh, SMBs online. So you, you, you start to see um, you know, significant amount of opportunity here, global opportunity with digital presence. Some of the web pros, Xlear uh, technology, they have some interesting model, right? They go to a company and say, hey, I can provide you an annual subscription of marketing services, and which will allow you a certain set of outcomes. So you are able to create uh, a nonlinear, recurring service instead of building a website once uh, and then you don't update it for three years now with this you can actually create an annual subscription offering um, and, and then go back and upsell additional layers of marketing on top of that which gives you recurring revenue on some level this revenue is also non-linear because it's not really based on number of people you would have so this is a very interesting opportunity and a conservatively it should be 125 million to 225 million dollar uh, web pro opportunity for this process automation, right? What has the pandemic has done is um, it's forced SMB owners um, to reduce the number of employees they have. Just many of the SMB owners are not afford to pay their uh, employees. And now they need to run the organizational processes and, and they're looking at how do I use um, automation technologies to effectively automate some of these processes. So if you look at, um, at what are the key area they're looking for help? One is they're looking at automation for uh, for cost optimization. Second, they're looking for automation to help them with business resilience. Third, they're looking for automation to improve customer experience. Are they able to address customer issues in a very short period? And four, they're uh, looking at automation uh, to help them with some of the cybersecurity needs. Employees are working from home. Is there a way you can automate and reduce the amount of uh, challenges they would potentially get from you know, security issues, right? So there are several use cases they're looking at. Uh, the largest use cases are customer uh, service, lead generation, order management, f &A processes, onboarding customers, as well as onboarding employees. And you're, you're starting to see some interesting investments. You have uh, companies uh, like Automation Anywhere, Microsoft, spending significant amount of money to train, um, uh, tr train developers on some of these platforms. The interesting thing about the automation platforms are these are low-code, no-code platforms, right? It's very easy to train. Um, uh, you don't need an en engineer with complex Java capability or a Python capability. You can uh, you can easily train somebody who, is, who has who understands logic to quickly build these automation scripts. And and this is a bit early, but what we are hearing from web pros is they're starting to get queries uh, from um, from SMBs. These are more mature digital savvy SMBs around automation, how they can help um, you know, drive some of the process automation areas. We expect about 2021, 2022, 
Um, there are going to be increased traction, traction and process automation. And some of the web pros are already starting to build capability internally and training some of the existing employees on process automation areas. And finally, the fifth key areas in terms of securing the small business operation. Right now with people working from home um, and SMBs are worried about um, uh, cybersecurity, they're worried about uh, data theft, IP theft, and also frankly, they're worried about uh, compliance issues, right? If they have customer data, customer data is stolen, they have GS, um, a GDPR, there are a lot of concerns. So really, really looking at how do I have um, a secure my overall system um, and, and, and processes and some of the key um, use cases they're looking for help is um, antivirus and firewall protection solutions, video surveillance solutions, data protection and encryption solutions. You're starting to see um, uh, web pros uh, investing in it. Um, in the web pros that we interviewed, they said that they're starting to get a lot of queries from their existing customers. Hey, how do I now increase the security? I hear about this data, um, you know, data theft. I'm hearing about the cybersecurity issues. Is there something you can do? Is there something you can come in and harden the firewall solution, what you already have? Are there other solutions we need to start building out? In fact, some of the web pros are also training their employees in terms of how do you build uh, secure IT applications and systems. So this is a $150 to $50 million opportunity. Again, very critical um, opportunity for small business to thrive, uh, not just during the pandemic, even post pandemic. So to be able to do all of these, right? Um, we believe there are four key playbooks that is super critical for the web professionals. First is, uh, you got to reimagine your talent strategy. Um, IT services and, and, and services industry is largely about talent, right? Just because your organization is smaller, um, it doesn't, um, you know, you can still go ahead and, and deploy best in class processes to attract, retain, engage, and develop top talent. And you have, you know, millions of engineers working in the IT services industry. And, and to frankly, uh, you know, several thousand of these uh, engineers are sitting on bench because they don't have projects or they're working on projects which is not very exciting for them or they don't like working in a company which is 100,000, 200,000 employees. So these, you, you can attract these talent if you can give them engaging work, ownership, accountability and bring some of these engineers because these engineers also have capability to service global customers. And, and other part is now because work from home it doesn't restrict you to hire only in Udaipur or only in, uh, only in Bangalore, only in Mumbai, you can attract talent from wherever in, uh, in India. In fact, you can attract talent wherever they are in the world and have them um, come in with the right expertise to help you service global customers. The second part is you got to follow what you preach your customer, meaning your go to market has to be largely digital. Right. Uh, you know, um, the, the big point of companies when they buy uh, IT services is about whether they trust the vendor. In a physical scenario, you can go meet customer face to face. You're able to build trust. But in a virtual scenario, how do you build trust? So that's a tough, uh, tough scenario. So key is for you to have your solution offering clearly articulated. You need to define the kind of outcomes you can offer to the company and the ROI they would get. So it's it becomes a very tangible solution um, and not very consultative. It's really tangible productized solutions you're able to sell with clear outcomes. Then you have to um, document your customer case studies, right? You, you more customer case study you have, the better trust you'll be able to meet uh, get with new customers. Build the customer case studies. It could be videos. It could be uh, documents. It could be uh, infographic. All all kinds of customer uh, reference. Now you take these, both your offerings as well as customer referrals, and use various digital channels, be it your website, social media, email marketing, a podcast, and other, other channels to make sure your net new customers are able to uh, understand uh, what you have to offer. And, and, and looking at the customer referrals you have, uh, as well as the tangibility of solution, they're able to build trust. So that's the second part. Third is how do you use the strategic platform partnership. If you're working with Endurance, you're working with Microsoft, you're working with Google. So these are global platforms. So how do you now tap into the global platforms and have them as a channel and have your offering on top of their marketplaces so the global customers can discover some of the solutions what you have to offer to them. And finally, global customers is all about quality. 
right? So you the the in in services, it's easier to get revenue from your existing customer referral rather than you sending a cold call, call email to try to get business. So how do you provide very high quality service to your customers so that your customer keeps coming back to you for more services, that net promoter score for your organization is very high, and customer willingly and happily um, recommend you to their friends and family so that you are able to build a flywheel of reference where you, you have strangers, the strangers become prospects, prospects become customers, and customers become promoters. You want more and more of your customers to become promoters, and to be able to drive that, you need to provide high quality service um, uh, to, to enable these customers, excite the customers. So those are the four key playbooks, which is important for web professionals to really for, uh, help them grow in the global market. So the, the last year has been you know, super challenging for, for, uh, for all of us, but we believe it has opened the door for Indian web pros to really focus on global markets. The companies which have focus, conviction, and the capability, as well as persistence, uh, will go ahead and win in the global market. Thank you. I can take some questions now. Hi, so we have a few questions coming up. Um, the first question is, what role can web developers and ITA's ecosystem play in helping drive digital maturity of SMBs? I think the first um, key aspect is uh, to help them understand what are other companies doing. SMBs, uh, the, the ones who are run by entrepreneurs, they are looking for role models. If you're able to explain with role models of how other companies have benefited, um, and the value they got, and that is going to be uh, number one. Number two is how do you make your offerings very easy to use, easy to consume? Is there a way you can come up with, if you're providing marketing offering, can you come up with the easy to use subscription, annual uh, retainer they can pay you with which you, you will provide them a set of services flexible for the SMBs to use your service on a regular basis. Third is how do you make the website and other solution you're, you're building very easy to use and easy to manage. So these are um, you know, three dimensions, great high awareness of role models, uh, easy business models uh, in terms of for them to use your service. And third is easy to use and maintain maintainable software, what you're able to build. That really will help you improve the digital maturity of these uh, companies. The second question is, are there any specific industry verticals you believe the opportunity we highlighted will play a more, um, uh, you know, a, a larger, uh, larger opportunity compared to others. The answer is, um, you know, if you focus on B two C, because that's where the impact is. Right, the pandemic has changed how consumers behave. The consumer uh, is adopting digital uh, platforms a lot more aggressively. So even if you look at a uh, look at a spa, for example, a spa in the US. Um, right now, they're looking at how do I engage my consumer um, a lot better because people are not coming in enough. They don't want to lose the loyal customers. Or if you go to a gym, the gym is looking at how do I provide these online classes uh, to these, um, you know, to these uh, consumers. So wherever, uh, so those are the kind of companies you want to really focus on, uh, which have a sense of urgency to adopt technology uh, early on. In terms of cloud migration kind of offering, you need uh, a slightly larger uh, SMB, probably in the SMBs in the manufacturing sector. We've been using a lot of on-prem software in Excel. Now that they, there are very few people going into the factories and going into the offices, they would like more migration kind of capability. So I would say B2C for more majority. And then the second is uh, really focusing on a more mature manufacturing company to the second you uh, know, big category. So third is what, Tools, um, according to you, can help web pros succeed. Um, I think the key um, here, because here um, the, the important part is you're not able to, for global customers, you're not going to be able to meet your customers. Unlike like now in an Indian customer, you can potentially go and meet. So that you need to be on um, using the set of platforms, which can also offer you uh, a marketplace, right? If you're using endurance and uh, you're on marketplace, you're using Google or Microsoft, you're part of the marketplace and um, and the tools which you're using is global tools. 
So it makes it easier for a global SMB to adopt to the kind of technology you have instead of you're using some custom platform uh, on top of which you're building services becomes harder to convince and build trust uh, with the SMBs. The fourth question is, how do you grow uh, your visibility? Like I told in my um, talk, uh, the key part for services is to build trust. And you can't build trust meeting meeting these customers. You've got to figure out how to do this um, uh, do this online. The first part is really having very strong uh, content and offering defined value proposition defined, and the outcomes and value the ROI customers will get. So having that very clearly defined, having very clear customer case studies, customer videos, and referrals. So these two, I would say, is the assets. And then you use various channels: social media, websites and other digital channels. You're able to propagate these content through these channels. The second is being part of various um, uh, marketplaces uh, and other aggregated websites where the SMEs are looking for help. And you being present with good reviews will help you gain uh, visibility with the, with the customer. So that's like the third question. Uh, fourth one, and then let me see if there is one final question. Yeah, so there's other one final question is, is the opportunity uh, you highlighted only for India? What are parallel or unique opportunity in the global ecosystem? In fact, the ones we spoke about are more global opportunities, right? So, um, so it's not just, just for India, largely, um, you know, and these are also relevant in India, but largely we, we analyze the global market opportunities. And again, in the global market opportunities you know, in India, the same opportunity will be relevant for what we call as more digitally savvy, the tool 5 million uh, SMBs uh, who are very mature, high aspiration, high digital maturity. So those will behave like the global uh, SMB. So it will be you know, relevant for these two uh, sectors. So those are the key questions, um, uh, questions I had. And uh, um, so Amina, if there are any other questions, um, I'm happy to answer. Um, I'll just hold on for a few seconds. Great. So there are no other no other questions. Thanks everyone. Thanks for listening to the session. Um, enjoy the rest of the rest of the evening.